Beginning in 1983, all 54 U.S. Air Force Titan II missile bases were decommissioned. All but one of these once majestic complexes were dismantled and the locations were sold at public auction. These hardened or nuclear bomb resistant underground complexes were to be dismantled and abandoned, never to be used or accessed again. The activation of these sites began in Tucson, Arizona at the 390th Strategic Missile Wing. A year later, the 381st Strategic Missile Wing near Wichita, Kansas was decommissioned. Lastly, the watch of the 308 near Little Rock, Arkansas was ended. Strict guidelines were to be followed during the decommissioning of these complexes. Privately owned companies, under Air Force supervision, were contracted to render these sites unusable as intercontinental ballistic missile sites and to make the property safe for future civilian ownership. The three-level launch control center was to be stripped of all military equipment and left abandoned. The 60-foot deep ventilation or escape shaft was to be filled completely with concrete grout. The Tucson sites were completely filled with grout, while those in Arkansas and Kansas were only partially filled with dirt and grout. The blast lock and access portal were also to be filled with dirt or grout, with the blast door secured in the shut position. Top side, the access portal concrete roof and upper three feet of wall were to be blown off and the stairs, elevator, and railing was to be removed. The 150-foot long cableway was to be filled with dirt or grout as well. The Arizona sites did not follow this guideline and the cableway was excavated, removed, and sold for scrap. This was not done at the sites in Arkansas or Kansas due to the difficulty of removing the 10 In place. The upper 20 to 25 feet of the missile silo structure was to be blasted and the rubble pushed into the vent shafts and missile silo. Holes were drilled and explosives were placed with tires covering them. An epic explosion demolished the top 20 feet of the silo. Tires are still strewn across the areas surrounding these sites. The rubble and debris, as well as fill dirt, were then pushed into the inner ring of the missile silo. When the blasting and pushing of rubble into the silo were completed, a three-foot thick cap of concrete reinforced with rebar was poured. The land topside was graded level and all structures were removed. The vaults for antenna or manholes were also filled with grout. Fuel and oxidizer tanks were usually removed or filled with grout. Mishaps were not uncommon when pushing the concrete rubble into the partially demolished silo structure.
Many men and women went into the belly of this nuclear beast called Titan II to deter nuclear war. The 20-year legacy of the Titan II program came to an abrupt end, complex by complex, but the memories made there will last as long as we tell and remember them.